This is a quick tutorial about weight groups in Go. In the lower part of the screen, I created a function that simulates a process that takes some time to finish. It will sleep a certain amount of milliseconds and then print the given integer value. The duration of the sleeping period is determined by the working duration constant in the upper part of the screen. As you can see, even though I created a loop that iterates from 0 to 9 and calls the long running process function in a concurrent go routine, I don't get an output with the numbers. This is because the go routines don't have enough time to finish the working duration before the program ends. Therefore, I'm adding a sleep statement to the main function. 20 milliseconds is enough time for each concurrent go routine to reach the print statement. However, if this was a real example, a sleep statement would not be a feasible solution. In real examples, usually one does not know how much time a long-running process exactly takes. Imagine this was a database or web request that could vary by several hundred milliseconds. Using a wait group is much better than a sleep statement. So I am creating one right before the go routines are issued. I think of the wait group as containing a simple counter. It counts how many go routines are still running and did not finished yet. I am using the add function of the wait group to add one to the counter for each go routine that will be issued inside the loop. In order to use the wait group inside of the go routine, I have to pass it to the function. The compiler is not yet happy with my code. It tells me that the wait group cannot be used as a copy, but only makes sense if I use a pointer. Remember, in Go, if you pass a non-pointer value to a function, Go will use a copy of that value inside the function. Wait groups must not be copies if passed to another function. Inside the Go routine, I'm calling the done function of the wait group after the defer keyword. This will decrement the counter by one at the end of the function indicating that one go routine is finished. All I have to do now is wait for all go routines to finish after the loop or, in this example, before the program does end. It works. By the way, the order of the numbers is a bit random since all go routines will be started almost at the same time. Now, it doesn't matter what working duration I choose. The code will work every time. Please consider liking the video or subscribing if you have learned something.